I'm Ash Nadison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Anton Ultimate, the co founder and CEO, and Matthew Hardy, the chief product officer of Awesome Finance. Gentlemen, welcome to the show, and it's a pleasure to have you here today. Look, thanks for having us, Ashton. Uh, so I'm Anton, I'm, a, I'm the CEO and co founder of Awesome Finance. Coming from traditional banking, having spent 10 years at Credit Suisse as an investment banker in my previous life, back in 2018, sort of light, moved into crypto and haven't really looked back since. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm joined by Matthew, the co-founder. He, uh, he comes from chemical industry of, out of all places, huh. was uh, digitizing chemical plants in his previous life and likewise saw the light back in 2018 and uh, has been enjoying the ride in crypto. That's great, Anton, and thank you for that introduction. Now, let's just dive right into the details. Could you start off with what are the main solutions that Awesome Finance is, is providing to the blockchain space right now? Uh, sure. Well, look, our, our app, it really has, uh, I'd say, four key things that it does. It has the portfolio aggregation functionality, so you can connect all your wallets, exchanges, into, and see them in one place. It has uh, Bitcoin ETH buy and sell functionality. Uh, and then on the less commoditized things, we have our own uh, algorithmic trader called Autopilot. And uh, we also have a, a gift functionality which is not very popular over Christmas, where, you know, the whole non, uh, well, the, the social distance gift, gifts were popular. So giving Bitcoins and, uh, mm -hmm. and autopilot was, was pretty hot. So, mm. so that's what we do. That's great. And yeah, I was reading into the autopilot trading system. You know, the DeFi uh, industry inside of Ethereum, Polkadot, and these, and these main blockchains right now has just gone exponentially crazy over 2020 and it seems like 2021 the trend is just continuing um, and you've created a product within this auto trader to vet DeFi projects and DeFi tokens um, Matthew maybe you can explain a little bit more on on how that process works yeah sure with pleasure uh, so first clarification we don't just vet DeFi token we have all sorts of uh, tokens in the autopilot uh, BTC, ETH, BNB, and DOT. Uh, when it comes to vetting tokens, we have a two-pronged approach. So there's first a qualitative look, which is uh, done by our team. Um, the quality of the project, regulatory certainty, uh, the underlying technology. Uh, and so for that reason, there are all sorts of tokens which we don't have. We don't have anything that is backed uh, by real world assets because we're looking mm -hmm. for a crypto native uh, project. We've stayed away from uh, privacy coins like mm -hmm. Monero and Dash, mm -hmm. although they don't always like to be called that, but we've seen a, a big regulatory move and a lot of them getting delisted and we don't want to mm -hmm. be holding a back of illi illiquid token one day. Mm -hmm. We had also decided to remove XRP uh, end of December. Um, we don't have any uh, stable coins. But if you don't meet any of those exclusion criteria, um, you can be integrated into the autopilot uh, desirable list. And then there's a second check that's done, which is more on the quantitative approach. Uh, where we look at uh, relative market cap and relative volumes. Uh, to make sure that those assets are big and liquid enough to be included. And then once we have done that screening, for example, today, we have about 42 uh, coins which are in our addressable universe. Uh, and then the autopilot makes its picks, uh, usually holding between 8 and 14 uh, different tokens. Um, as time goes, and trades uh, multiple times a day. Very interesting. And now, just so that I get a clear picture from the high level, is it sort of like an index where I just say I have $100,000 and I put it in and then the autopilot rebalances the portfolio daily or weekly or hourly into what it thinks is best? Uh, so uh, in, uh, you go, my dear first, and I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a bit more than a rebalancer because the rebalancer you would get it they give it a universe of token and it would just rebalance in between that. Mm -hmm. So you tell it, okay, I want to stay at uh, twenty percent of each, and it just makes mm -hmm. sure that all your winners go and fill the bucket of all your losers, which for us isn't a very uh, appealing proposition, especially if you're not like we're 
in traditional market that would make sense here things can move pretty fast and so you can have your winners fill in the buckets of your losers until you've lost all your money so uh. in that sense it's not really a rebalancer uh and then it's not really an auto trader in the sense that you would set your strategy or follow someone else's because it's really a portfolio building uh algorithm uh so the 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 comparison isn't an index also also because index mm -hmm. will tend to take a, a top 20 or top mm -hmm. 50 or top 100 but uh might cap some of them uh at arbitrary or somewhat arbitrary numbers but with us you really have the flexibility of having big positions in relatively small tokens mm -hmm. uh as the portfolio manager the quant portfolio manager uh sees that as being good for diversification mm -hmm. yeah so i think the general point is to kind of uh, of, the, of the autopilot is to really cut the downward volatility so to make sure to create that of your crypto portfolio right like a smooth line mm -hmm. uh north east so that way like <laughs> and it doesn't have the same kind of up and down swings mm -hmm. the way you'd see in a, in, in in a single position uh but it's just it's a bit more than than just you know, buying the market. It's kind of a, a smart way of buying the market. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, both of you. And now, I was, the, my next question, it might relate to this, Anton, is, is what is the most unique or what's the competitive advantage of the autopilot compared to some of these other portfolios that are just rebalancers or they're auto traders? Well, I think there are a couple of things. Uh, first is uh, the team. So I think we re I, I really think we have a, a strong group uh, group of people behind it. Aside from ourselves, there are quants from uh, who come from uh, various walks of life, uh, PhD mathematicians. So really, guys who kind of know when uh, know their stuff when it comes to numbers. And so there is a uh, so that's that's that uh, that's point number one. Point number two, I think there is also uh, we you know is the actual performance. So the autopilot has been live since September 2019. And by the way, we started the strategy by putting our own money. And only in April 2020 did we start taking other people's money. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you look back and you look at the track record, it kind of it beats uh, all the competing strategies. It beats all the indices. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't always beat Bitcoin, admittedly. But equally, there is a price to pay for diversification. So if mm -hmm. you carry a portfolio of, of assets, you inevitably will be times when you lose relative to a uh, to a single asset. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. And I was going to ask about that diversification. I saw on your site that you know that's sort of a, a key standing is is being diversified. But you talked about Matthew how it's you know having an index that's completely balanced across the board may not be the best because the winners are dumping into the losers and and so on. Or you know having the ability to have small cap coins that have a lot of you know a lot of weighting into your portfolio um can you just talk about your diversification strategy in terms of you know large caps versus small caps versus types of coins and and, and how you see that in the through the auto trader i sure can uh, so the what the the autopilot cares about is uniquely the only price data it doesn't care if it's a DeFi token or mm -hmm. a blockchain token. There's really, there's no, it, it doesn't care about the substance. It's just looking to make sure that you are diversified when it comes to how correlated those assets are to one another. Mm. Uh, and that's where we can see that uh, it's doing a great job. We have a, a ratio called the, the diversification ratio, which we abbreviate for a D ratio, um, which uh, expresses the weighted average volatility of the portfolio instruments uh, as a multiple of the overall volatility. And if you look at something like Bitcoin, well, the diversification ratio is obviously one because the, you only hold one asset. And then if you look at uh, something like uh, the top 20 uh, that you can find uh, uh, on Crypto 20, uh, the diversification ratio is um, <clears throat> 1.2 because you do hold 20 assets, but because they are the biggest ones that people trade the most, their uh, correlation is really high. And then if you look at something like the S&P 500, which is also kind of all big companies uh, lumped together, 
Uh, there you have a diversification ratio of 1.7. And for us on the autopilot, we have a diversification ratio of 2.2. So hmm. it means that the assets you're holding uh, with us in the autopilot are very diversified, which is uh, kind of what enables what Anton was talking about, the uh, smooth curve, where when everything takes a dive, we still are holding assets, which hopefully aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, let me give a couple of examples. Uh, in March, when everything came down crashing, autopilot was flat, barely budged. And then uh, I think that that's kind of that that shows one fast diversification. The other side of it is, and here here is how difference from just following an index or a market weighted mm -hmm. index is. Well, if you were in a in a market weighted index, then in May in June, your second largest holding would be Ethereum because mm -hmm. that's the second largest capitalization coin. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, it was a small coin called Link, which is was quite unknown at the time. And then uh, I think we also what happened to, to Chainlink over over June and July. So it's a, it, it's a project that passed the qualitative test and based on the quantitative uh, analysis of its trading pattern, the Autopar recognized that it probably has more potential than ETH at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it was part of its universe. So it had the freedom to, to take a, a, a position uh, at a discretion. Mm -hmm. We cap every position at 30%. So mm -hmm. you always have at least three assets in your in your portfolio, mm -hmm. but still, I think that sort of discretion that kind of you know that gives the other part an edge versus an index strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. And yeah, Link exploded from was it four dollars or so? I think it recently hit a high of twenty five dollars, and it seems like it's going to continue to go. And so now this has a lot of people interested, Anton. And I just want to go back to you know, the requirements for a minute for people that are, this has really piqued their interest. Is there any requirements in terms of jurisdictions or amount of, that you can invest? Or are there any limitations to who can get involved with Awesome Finance? Well, so we really try and make it as uh, widely available as possible. So to, to that end, we really lower the, the entry level as much as we could. So currently it's uh, 30 euros. So that's kind of the, uh, that's the lowest amount you can put in the autopilot. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Uh, so you can either just transfer uh, BTC, or you can uh, do a bank transfer. You can do a, a, a card payment. So there's uh, there are three different ways in which you can uh, which you can come in. When it comes to jurisdiction, again, the the, the idea is to really be global. But uh, for the minute, we cannot be in the U.S. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, for the regulatory reasons. Uh, but I think when you think about the the big jurisdictions. I think U.S. and uh, mainland China, sadly, are the two places where we mm -hmm. uh, cannot be. So as long as you don't live in any of those two places, mm -hmm. uh, we'd be super happy to have you. That's good to know. And Matthew, you had mentioned the delisting of XRP and, and avoiding privacy coins. Um, are there? Are you constantly adding or removing coins? Like, for example, there's many DeFi projects that are starting to come up but you know right now they're just startups that you know people are getting into and they may be future unicorns or they may be exit scams no one really knows is there a limitation on what kind of coins moving forward besides those ones you've already mentioned in terms of what can be in the autopilot yes so uh we do review the universe daily uh so every day uh, for quality reasons or for uh, uh, market reasons, like mm -hmm. the market cap drops or uh, the volumes aren't good enough anymore, mm -hmm. uh, we add or remove the assets to the autopilot. Mm -hmm. So, and that's kind of uh, <laughs> where we see a lot of our added value because you were asking uh, if you want a smartly diversified portfolio in crypto because the space is so active and because it's so hard to vet, if you do it yourself, Mm -hmm. It's maybe not a full-time job, but it might get close enough. Whereas if you do it with us, uh, we we take care of all that vetting for you. Mm -hmm. So we we don't take tiny, tiny coins because you still need a relatively mm -hmm. big market cap to be yeah. able to enter the universe. Uh, but we don't wait until they're top four either. So mm -hmm. we try to strike that delicate balance between sufficient volumes and uh, big enough market caps. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah great so now you you know 2021 as we mentioned DeFi looks like it's going to continue this trend 
what's in the roadmap for Awesome Finance? You know, the platform is live right now. Do you have plans for further releases and, and development updates throughout 2021? Yeah, so I mean, there, there's a lot going on in the background. Uh, what we are looking to, to do is to kind of continue adding those crypto wealth manager strategies. So we're looking at some of the more fixed income like products to be added. So for the, mm -hmm. for the folks that don't necessarily want to have the kind of market exposure, but would rather earn some, some interest in some shape or form on the crypto, we're looking to add uh, a couple more market strategies. So I think it really, I mean, what we want to, we want awesome to become is this kind of a, a place where you come and manage your crypto wealth. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be working towards that goal throughout 2021. Mm -hmm. Also, having integration with some of the DeFi projects is definitely part and parcel of it. I, uh, I think it's a bit too early to say with which ones, mm -hmm. but it's definitely a, a, a number of DeFi projects which we're looking to, to integrate with. Mm -hmm. That's great. And if the viewers are looking to get involved, follow along with these updates and, and start using Awesome Finance, what's the best way for them to get involved? Awesome.finance is our website. You can find all the uh, well the description there. You can uh, you can ask, you have the web app there. You can find us in app stores, Awesome Finance. Mm -hmm. If they have any questions, they can write either to support at awesome.finance or directly to me, CEO at awesome.finance. So we'll be happy to, to answer any questions and, uh, and welcome to the platform. Great. Anton, Matthew, thank you so much for the time. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. All the best with Awesome Finance in 2021 and let's follow up in the near future. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Ashton. Thanks for having us.